Okay, should we actually start for real? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, I'll, I'll do a cheesy little intro. All right. Hello, and welcome to the Walking Dead Definitive Series Developers oh. Commentary. Did you say O? Oh, Wait, my, mic- my microphone's not on, or I don't Damn hear it. anything. Sorry. Damn it. I switched out packs. I just, Sorry. Just, just turn it up. Yeah, yeah. Just turn it up. Walking there you go. Oh, goes. now it's on. Oh, it okay, sounds cool. good. He's a, he's a story <laughs> guy. Is that, is that better? He's a story Sorry, guy. Okay, okay take uh, seven. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hello, and welcome to the Walking Dead Definitive Series Developers Commentary Track. I think there's enough words in that title. Uh, my name is Kent Mutel. I am creative director of the final season and a cinematic artist on this season. And I am joined by an all-star cast of other developers who also worked on the season. And they are, in sequence... Dennis Lenart. Uh, I was a director <clears throat> and, man, head of cinematic department uh, and been a Telltale for ever. <laughs> OG. Really, truly. Uh, I am Melissa Hutchison and I am the voice of Clementine. And I'm Dave Fenoy and I am not a developer, but I am the voice of Lee Everett. And I'm Julian Kwasniewski, and I did the voice direction and involved in casting and babysitting the talent. <laughs> Which is a Wee. task. Yeah. I'm so glad someone did that. <laughs> and right. I I worked in what became known as the fun office. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. That's right. Oh, boy. Studio oh, Jory. Boy. Studio Except Jory for a couple of specific days. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the, what we're going to do here is we're going to play through the first episode of the first season and just talk about uh, memories of making it as we go. So... What if we can't remember yeah. that far back? I know, right? I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. Make up stuff. No one will know the difference. <laughs> just correct uh, me. It was a long time ago. Before we start, I just want to give a shout out to Sean Vanneman, Jake Rodkin. Yeah. Uh, yes. We, we wish could be here, but couldn't. Um, and we'll try to talk about as much stuff as we remember. Who are they now? Uh, to get them. <laughs> yeah, they were only the leads on this season. Uh, but yeah, we, we definitely wouldn't be here without them. And yes. they made uh, a lot of amazing decisions that we got to work with on the rest of the season. So. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Here, here. They make good video games. All right, yes. let's start. Yeah. But this is also a good video game. 100 Game of the Year awards. Over. That's true. More Game I of believe. the Year awards than it could, it seems possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just inventing companies. To Sean will this. remember this. <laughs> and so begins. Hey, we're in the Skybound offices right now. Look at that. What? Yep. This has come real full circle. Uh, seriously. So all the episode titles... Um, or the, the title card of The Walking Dead, I remember having different colors, which was uh, a Jake thing planned out from the beginning. <clears throat> Random detail that I didn't know when I was working on episode two and I changed the color and then he came to me and went, why are you oh, that's not doing awesome. the thing we're supposed to do? I was like, oh, whoops. There he is. That's good. Wow, there he is. There's Sean's Vanneman. Hey. Sean Vanneman. Yay, hey, Jake, Sean. I like Sean's Vanneman. <laughs> hey, there's Mark Barbalak. <laughs> oh yeah, who's also uh, the legal counsel yes, for Telltale. Yes, the attorney for Telltale Games. This uh, the rearview mirror shot weirdly was like the most complicated technical thing we'd ever done in the Telltale engine at the time. Isn't there like an entire second lead is sitting outside the side of the car when we see the shots of him reflected in the window? Uh, yeah, I think so. Wow, With just like a render constant oh, alpha low or something. Yeah. But I remember hearing the pitch for this and thinking that. Starting in the back of a cop car on your way to jail was a pretty awesome setting for uh, for starting a game, and immediately people just getting invested and in wanting to figure out what's, what's going happening. on. Yeah. Who is this guy? What, I love all the, the little past? things you see out the window too. Yeah, this is a good looping. I feel like that was set. the station wagon that the stranger has in episode two that oh, we just passed. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably just a reuse <laughs> of uh, we needed car models at the time. I think we added him in the collection a version. He's one version passing of this, I think in the wrong lane. In. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, from That's a awesome. design standpoint, the the idea of starting really limited for people in you just get control over the camera <clears throat> um, to sort of get comfortable with moving it around before you're actually in free walks and having to navigate um, in space as well. <clears throat> yep. I think um, Eric Parsons worked on all of this stuff for yeah. a long time. <clears throat> Typically at Telltale, the first scenes of any game go under extreme amounts of scrutiny, so. That's me on the radio. Was that you? Yeah. You're, you're all over the place. I'm the, the answering place. machine, I'm the radio. I yeah. take the big gigs. Yeah. <laughs> there are yeah. no small parts, there only are. small actors. That's right. Man, I got paid a lot for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, he's got a bit of his own agency as a character. He's not totally just the player. You, you know what I remember is doing this uh, first episode. 20 minutes in, I was like, wow, this is really good. Mm-hmm. These, 
This this is just good writing, huh? Yeah. Man. Yeah. I was really happy that uh, I got this gig. As we, well, I think we, we all are. Really yeah, happy yeah, that you yeah. got this. And gig. what was great is th those were the days it's when we mutual. we flew them up, and so Dave would stay in Fairfax oh, yeah. at the inn at the one hotel, and yep. then and you introduced me to all your radio buddies like Dave Padilla. Oh, Dave Padilla. We party yeah. with Dave. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's when I was on the radio in, in, on KSOL in, in the Bay Area in the '80s, Dave was my news guy. That's so funny. Hmm. He still I hear awesome. him all the time. Oh yeah. KCBS. It's all a big mistake. It wasn't me. It's good. There you go. And you know, it's, you, you can't just say man. You really got to get the feeling. <laughs> achieved. You achieved. Some of your finest acting work. I definitely remember excitement around the office when uh, there was a big search to find a Lee character, and it was a long, hard journey. And then I remember as soon as, oh god, now everything's coming off the rails. Oh, um, I can just keep going. Look out! As Help. soon as we heard your voice and audition, everybody—it was just like the whole office was like, "All right, cool, cast, done." That's like, and it was like an uh, amazing moment. <laughs> well, we originally we found Dave because he played a character in a Law and Order game, right? Yeah. We played right. Um, Montrose. Montrose. I was a, a, a I was a, a crooked politician. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then also with uh, with Melissa as well. I remember in the early days, like Sean talking about how like this nothing will work in this game if we don't have a good Clementine, and exactly. that was like the oh, big worry. So it was true. just like there's got to be someone to balance out like the the strength that that Dave brings for um, well, his performance, and like obviously just having someone who can really embody that character and make her not feel like the typical video game kid, which all other video game right. like children were till that Weren't time. Weren't you guys so. al also auditioning Well, I was gonna children? say we did that. Yeah, and I have mm. a bunch of them that I listen to and they're all kids, but they could never have the Emotional gravity range. that yeah. you it's a pretty that you needed some heavy. wisdom in yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> it gets this heavy. Is, this it gets is a kid that goes crazy. through a lot. <laughs> well, and also just the aging over the seasons. Right. You, you know. Which wasn't known that that like, would happen, actually. Yeah. I don't but think that was the intention. But just imagine if a kid nope. had, going you know, into season one. gone off to college or something <clears> and, wait, well, wait, we need you in this game. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, I know. You can't go to college. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather personally voice act in college. Yeah, I mean, I mean voice come on. acting, but <laughs> that's just me, and that's what I did. Well, and I think boom, that's my story. <laughs> on a de developer side too, um, Sean and Jake from like the very early days always sort of talked to the team about you know treat Clementine as an adult. Like, yeah. think of her as that as opposed to a kid mm -hmm. when you're making choices. And it, it definitely was a thing that made all the difference in the world because right. people use immediately throw out all the tropes you think, and then like really sort of get your head into the character when you're sort of doing animation stuff or putting together the cinematics and well and and, the, and what you're speaking on as far as the children you really see that especially when she's reflecting in scenes with duck yes yeah. duck yeah. is Total, that yeah. kid that Absolutely. if you were if yeah. he was the kid that i'm gonna drive found, the tractor like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yep okie dokie duck this is a great i yeah. i love this whole scene it's such a good like horror setup. Yeah. It's Here, awesome. let me go help this uh, this 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 cop that was driving. He looks injured. You know what's interesting <laughs> about this? And Dennis and Kent, I might be totally wrong, it's a cop. but not too many people at Telltale were actually watching. And here I am sitting in Skybound. Uh, <laughs> we're not. This is like really, really. There wasn't like hardcore. Like, oh, I watch the show. I every know, and week. we were we would we were watching book. it. Hadn't the show like yeah. just started? It was yeah. like going like into the, the second season because I was a fan of the show. Right? Yeah, the, the show had been on how many seasons? I think it was going e either finishing second season or going into the second yeah. season. Yeah, and it was great. Like I was watching it. I I actually only meant to watch a few episodes to like get. We were still doing sound at the time, mm -hmm. and just to see how they did the ambiences and you know what the zombies sound like, and. Then I got hooked on it. Right. Yeah, I did too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was okay. watching it, but not a lot. But it was a show that I was sampling because everybody was, oh, well, you got to watch the yeah, yeah. Right. No, it was. And then I really yeah. did when when this audition came up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I remember uh, episode one or two, uh, Rolling Stone magazine came out and said, the game is better than the TV show. Yeah, I remember. Drop your mic. Just knock yeah. it over right now. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. 
Then there's something I want to ask about here. I, I remember this this part being. I remember at one point the entire game was first person. Yeah. So and there was some kind of a somewhat kind of late change. One of the things that's relevant to bring up is one of the early sort of <clears throat> conceits of the game. Uh, where I remember Sean Jake talking a lot about how like you'll never oh. players never care about their character dying because you know they're gonna come back in you know 20 seconds with yeah. after the load right. screen. But investing in time and other characters to make it seem like they could die at any time was sort of like the big twist of, of what made this game really interesting. And it was, always... I think it's what people really people really got invested mm -hmm. in these characters more than I'd ever seen on For anything. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's funny because when we would go to and it still happens to go to conventions, and uh, we were able to do some together. What people would say is, I've never cared about characters in a video game before. Right. And then you and Clementine oh, yeah. made me cry. I saw us, you, you, we were at a, I don't know, Dragon Con Atlanta. Mm -hmm. You were talking to someone and someone was coming up to our line and you just heard your voice and this is a grown man and he stood there and he just started to like tears out of his eyes cry. Mm. That's because I owed him money. <laughs> 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 but no, it's, it's to, to ha see this effect. It's yeah. it's. I mean, people share like the craziest yeah. stories of how this game has taken them through like the shittiest yeah. of times, or they've met their best friends, or tra la la. Like so many like I've, I've crazy met, stories. I've met uh, people who didn't have a dad that said Lee became oh, wow. their surrogate father. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is crazy. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I've cried. I've yeah. cried at conventions. Yeah. <laughs> I've reached points where people tell me things that I, yeah. I'm just, it's its overwhelmingly moving. I remember <laughs> you both, and a couple other people saying that too, that when you experienced that, it was really surreal at first yeah. too. Yeah, well, and I mean, as far as working with Telltale, because I go way back with Telltale games, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and most of the characters I've played have all been comedy, mm -hmm. too, so this was the first, you know, well, not even with Telltale, this is the first game I worked on where there's just so much emotional yeah. depth and story. And uh, uh, I, hashtag, I, I have been on, I've been on a bunch of games, <laughs> but this was clearly the best script uh, that I had done, um, and it had the most interaction with other characters uh, and just, mm. Well, and this will probably be a great time yeah. to mention, and not just because you're in the room, Julian, but he, uh, I mean, beyond The Walking Dead, any game I've ever worked on with you or any project, but uh, when you read with us, because obviously we don't, not obviously, we don't record uh, together, right. actors in the same room together, and you directing us, you really performed which is amazing because so you'll have someone read lines with you sometimes, but you yeah. read the lines because uh, you know that's a good you're point. An actor. And well, we we didn't have feeders then, oh, so yeah. literally the yeah. first actor to go set the tone for the whole damn episode, right. mm -hmm. and um, and so yeah, I you know, but I, that's where we would because I always would work closely with Dennis or Sean mm -hmm. or whoever was in the in the booth with right. me, and we would we would say like this is this scene is really quiet. And, or, you know, they're 20 feet away. So I would try to mimic that. Um. But I, I, it is a good point to bring up because I, I remember, like, you know, we would as sort of, um, like, the dev team be in a session, you know, with, like, Julian all day, and, and three or four different actors would come in, and we're just going through, like, this 10-hour yeah, marathon. Totally. And, but, yeah, at, at 6 p.m., like, Julian's still, like, giving it his all, uh, yeah. like, reading God all the other it, parts right. against it, and we're just like, <laughs> I was just tired oh, sitting does. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Rebecca Schweitzer, I just have to mention that yeah. she the, the answering her. machine yeah. is such a small a part of this and, first and episode. And that's and she her just audition. Nailed it, and that's what I was going to wow. say. Yeah. That's her audition, and it was used in the game, and, and it was also used in a trailer, and it was one of the, one of the most effective trailers was. that I remember. Wow. Yeah, and it was the first this. time where we took an audition, and then we went back to the agents and said, "Oh, and that's me uh, as the." <laughs> answering machine voice. Nice. We, if we were I drinking right really now, we'd do parts. shots every I'm time we hear Julian. I'm still spending those 20s. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. But oh, um, yeah, no, Rebecca, um, and, and we just, we processed the audition and then went back and said, um, you got the role. You never have to come in. <laughs> You're done. That's awesome. That's we always a nice call. We don't want to see you, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to use your voice. Awesome. I love. And we those. might send you a check. I love how the messages too. I just heard them when we were um, at the office with Kent the other day. Um, just how they progress. 
oh, there's some crazy guy at the ER or whatever. And and uh, mm, yeah. I love how she, her she yeah, just covers she the entire she just goes on apocalypse like, in, it. in really four minutes. It's a very efficient zombie apocalypse story it, it, in like yeah, three yeah. lines. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. Left at 6.51 a.m. Clementine, baby. If you can hear this, call the police. That's 911. We love you. We love you. We love you. Hello? You need to be quiet. Who is this? I'm Clementine. This is my house. Hi, Clementine. I'm Lee. You're not my daddy. No, I'm not. How old are you? Eight. And you're all alone. Um, this was a scary, I remember this being, this is an awesome scene. Yeah, I well. think those parents yeah. would have left their kid with a babysitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here she comes. Um, this, uh, definitely this was a step up cinematically for Telltale as well too, before we were doing mostly adventure games um, with Jurassic Park. There was an effort to sort of be more film-like um, but it was more action-y than anything, and I felt like this was a big step forward. It was a big challenge, I know, for the department there to get subtle with it. Yeah, no, and you, I, I just think the, the visual style, too, was just so... Oh. Well, there's oh, the babysitter, there's the babysitter. Dave. Hey, it's Sandra. <laughs> oh, good old button mashing. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, I stepped on your introduction, but that Minor was, uh, oh, it's that a, was Clementine. How there she dare was. you. <laughs> That's okay. okay. Oh, and Ooh. Lee just slipped on the blood. I'll be around for a while. so, so <laughs> slippery. <laughs> that was a contentious back and forth, I think, About of how the slipping on the be. blood, yeah. <laughs> well, he's, you know, he's got a bad leg. and Yeah. You know, it's well, uh, he hasn't seen zombies before. So. Here we go. Well, give this me that hammer. Give me that give hammer. Me that hammer. <laughs> I love that their Quickly relationship child. starts with her saving him. Yeah, that's, yeah, really that's cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so Becky Arkovich worked on the this babysitter stuff for I don't even know how many months. A lot. Um, but it was the first big action scene in the game that was sort of a new <laughs> style yeah. of what we were doing. So <laughs> this went through so many iterations <laughs> and ripped up and redone, and she stuck through it and made an awesome thing. That's like, amazing to be called. Good voice over there. Good effects. Yeah. You sound a lot I, like him, I too. Really <laughs> <laughs> I, um, when we did the episode, uh, or sorry, season four, uh, just hearing some of, like, who works, oh, actually, at the playthrough in Oakland uh, mm -hmm. for the final episode of season four, I was sitting next to a woman named Cadet, and she, like, you know, I was like, oh, well, what did you do with Telltale? And she specifically worked on, and now I'm going to screw it up. Sorry, Cadet. But I think it was the flashback <laughs> at Ericsson's. Anyways, you may not remember. She did, she did all the dream sequences in season four, Cadet. Yes, okay. but it's like, it's so, like, you you don't, I, I forget yeah, how, yeah. like, well, here's your one yep. thing that you're going to be working mm. on. And, you know. That was the cool thing. She didn't thing. know the yeah. end of the game when I, well, I'm not going to spoil it for those or whatever. Sure. But when something big happened, she was like, oh, my God. And I'm like, oh, you didn't know about this? Mm, yeah. yeah. No, I literally only worked on this scene. In your own world sometimes. That was the yeah. cool thing about Telltale. There are so many, and so many of them we just knew from bugs or from email, you know, and you'd finally meet someone like, oh, my God, that's you? And, you, um, don't yeah. you don't look anything like, like your what name. I thought you'd yeah. look like. <laughs> <laughs> but they would, yeah, they would spend so much time on just one, one like little Becky piece. And the, Becky and the Babysitter. Wow, that would be a great the movie. <laughs> the That's the album. It's great. Yeah. Oh, the hat. Yay. Yeah. It's funny. I was looking at the dialogue Legacy. file for the scene, and the final version of the babysitter fight that ended up being the one, the folder just says Andrew's new babysitter fight or new mm. baby fight. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <That's good. laughs> there's like a bunch of folders of like iterations of the babysitter fight mm -hmm. still yeah. in the dialogue baby file. Baby fight 17. Oh, and the final one, I guess, must have been Andrew Langley. Yep. Langley. Well, yeah. he probably wired it up and, yeah. and helped with the, the design on it. Yeah. But I remember that's the thing a lot of people don't realize about games is usually when they ship, specifically Telltale games, because it's such a quick episodic schedule. There's so much stuff 
that is just left over that's cut or things that like yeah. whole scenes that are in the game there, you yeah. know? Um, and actually nowadays people have sort of developed tools where they can rip that stuff I love out that. and it's great. Oh man. I ain't never getting home to mama at this rate. This sucks. Oh, it's hot dish night. What's the matter? Should I stay? What? I don't want to sleep in the treehouse tonight, but I don't know if I should leave. What if my parents come home? I won't leave you alone. Oh, look, little clam. There's Chet. So Chet. 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 That's Chet. his name. I was, I was gonna ask who are who are these guys again? That's Sh well, that's Sean Green. He's a canon comic character. Yeah. Oh. And Chet has become kind of a meme on the internet because he he wants to get home for hot dish. It's funny. <laughs> 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 so it's Sean's really good at finding oh. random details that people remember like that that just make everything feel grounded, which is pretty funny. It makes him random as a character. Yeah. I, I understand that he wants that hot dish. <laughs> it's this motivation. Who voiced those guys? Do we? Do you remember, Julian? Uh, Chet was um, Sorry Brian Davis. Oh yeah, cool. And um, I think I remember that. That he was. There was some comment. There was you know, like fans made a, a lot of videos of they took scenes and then they ma turned them into comedies. <laughs> and there's one where Lee's rolling around town in the in the truck. Blasting music and he's like pulling. I I can't find it. I tried to find it. Oh yeah, I've seen that. It was so freaking funny. What was he playing? Snoop? No, yeah. All you hear is bass. And then he stops and he gets out of the car. Well, he gets out of the car and he like goes in the house and then he comes back out. That's great. Yeah. I I I almost. The car's vibrating. It was. Yeah, I want to say. Well, people have too much time on their hands, but when gems like that pop up, I'm just so grateful for human beings who put the time into doing those things. I you know, my favorite thing used to be uh, after, an, at least on uh, in, in sort of the early days, um, like season one style, where an episode would, would come out and I would just watch playthroughs that night of like yeah. people live streaming it and just seeing their totally. reactions. It was super fun. Totally, absolutely. Yeah. This is it. It was this scene. And then he turns off the stereo, gets out. <laughs> <laughs> Are we about to meet Andy St. I wouldn't Jones? even know oh, how yeah. to find that. No. Um, really quick, I'll dive back to an, into a thing from earlier. The first person prototype. So... The origin, the origin, wow, of this game, um, there was an early sort of zombie, we call it the spinning plates prototype, yeah. um, maybe even a year before this, like, actual production started on this, where it was an attempt to find um, just a sort of a new way of storytelling and figuring out, like, what mechanics we could use to get people invested in characters in a scene and, like, have things going on where they have to make tough choices and um, there's an imminent threat, so... Zombies was a place to start. Um, the, the relationship with Skybound had been sort of um, slowly forming, and we got the eventual um, suggestion of like, oh, maybe this could, like we could turn this in, into something that's uh, Walking Dead based, which was super exciting for everybody because we were really stoked to work on it. That's cool. Um, but that one, actually, I don't remember if the original prototype was, was first person, but then once we sort of started in earnest on season one, kind of just at a high level concept, um, uh, Carl and Eric Parsons and, and Sean and Jake worked on uh, a first-person prototype that we use the motor in environment, and you'd basically walk around in first-person. Everything happened in first-person. There was no third-person cinematics, um, and it was a whole scene that was playable, and I hope someone has it out there. I know. <laughs> yeah, that'd it be really it, it was It was really interesting, interesting. and then that, that turned into a version where it was sort of half first person, half third person, and Got there was it. a prototype for that as well, which was, actually worked really well too. What was um, the one that was in, I know it was the Home Depot office, and it was the, um, they were in like a, a medical facility or- The morgue. The morgue. Yeah, that was yeah. a test environment. Yeah, there was, uh, I don't know if legally we can say what we used, oh, okay. but there were other characters <laughs> other people. from other IPs that were just laying around in the yeah. Telltale tool, and so just a prototype was made oh, using cool. a bunch of I remember those seeing, that was the Sam first Max time characters I saw. and all sorts of stuff. Um, I was so. totally off the mark, by the way. This is not Andy St. John. We're not quite there yet. This is Herschel. Oh, yeah. So yeah. this is, I just yeah. need to correct myself because I know there's someone out there right now going, oh, yeah, wrong. Yeah. It, it's been tweeted many times. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, this God. isn't live. Edit there's that a, out. There's a, far, there's a farm for episode. Chuck Karukalis. Oh, that's yeah. 
Chuck played Herschel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was Herschel, the deepest voice oh, yeah, in the Chuck's industry. Got Did I miss vocals the, on him? The callback where Sean Green introduces you and he asks Herschel asks who you are and that he stuff calls did, back your that choice. That stuff did happen. I, okay. I'm, I'm actually unsure if I played it correctly. So the really quickest point, pointing out, uh, worth pointing out that early, or maybe yeah, I guess we probably did miss it. Early in the development, when all these scenes were coming together, the idea of uh, the player making choices in dialogue that were then called back later and made you feel like the game was listening to you it wasn't really... Like, no one really knew if it was going to work or if people are going to care that much. And yeah. I remember that moment uh, where you first meet Clementine, she, and you, um, I guess, can say, uh, when you, when you, say you you're like you, a babysitter. You or a neighbor. Yeah, you're a babysitter or a neighbor or whatever. And then when you get to the scene and you're introduced by Sean as the neighbors or the babysitter or whatever choice you made earlier. And that was, I remember a thing, it went around the office where everyone was like, oh man, I played that scene. It's really cool. And even though it's just a small, yeah. subtle choice, it really made you feel like the game was listening to every small choice you made. And I think that was a really important moment for making people feel like, okay, going forward, like any any dialogue choice I make could come back That's and have ramifications, cool, yeah. which was really cool to see. That was when I remember seeing it and going like, maybe this could work out. <laughs> oh, really man. Cool. The, the Herschel scene is a really so cool. good tutorial for that because he catches you in yeah. almost anything you lie about and he will yeah, he'll call back to it. I'm like, I want to fangirl out on both of you guys now. <laughs> oh my nope. God, I'm actually sitting next to the people who made this game. I mean, we it's, just, it's we just remember stories. I know, yeah. but the stories, I mean, led to like... I know, it's funny. Like, it's just a day at the amazing, office. Yeah. And, you know, and, and how changing deep in the, the industry you have to get uh, mm -hmm. technically to do these things yeah. That, yeah. that show up on screen and mm -hmm. plays, I mean, it just makes right. sense. Yeah. Oh, if I go do this, this happens and yeah. get on Bada this path. Bing. If I do this, uh, yep. Yeah. The one thing you guys did screw up, though, you, uh -oh. you could not save Lee. Uh, oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, Assholes. That. <laughs> the technology just wasn't advanced enough yet. It's true. Well, yeah, right. Yes. I think we met the day that you found out, right? Didn't yeah, we meet? Yeah. We met oh, you guys when I was filling in for episode Cause, cause three. The of I was doing laundry. Yeah, the, the nature of video games <laughs> is that you're, you're, you had a session after in me. Fairfax. I brought my laundry yeah. to Fairfax. Why uh, not? Funny. <laughs> the nature of video games is 99 and 44, 100% of the time you're working by yourself. So, and since I was a guy that came up from L.A., and just about everybody else in the game at that point were... Uh, San Francisco actors mm -hmm. who Telltale had yeah. used a lot and yeah. a really good crew of actors, by the way, many of whom mm -hmm. have moved to Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I kept thinking, wow, I'd, I'd really like to meet <laughs> all these. And I'm walking down the street. I'm going to get lunch. <laughs> yeah. and, and she walks up to me. Oh, Dave and I, hi. I'm <laughs> Melissa. I, I, I'm Clem. I'm Clem. <laughs> Uncanny and Melissa. It was, pretty, it was, I know, it was spot on. <laughs> yeah, and it was spot on. Instant friendship. That's great. Yes, yeah. Yeah, this whole season in general with all of us who. I totally. And then yeah, uh, I don't great. think it was that visit, but you came back up and Jory yeah, it was a, it was and you guys next organized uh, I, the Thai food outing. That was, that was fun. I was, oh, I, I, I was I so pictures. impressed with the project, the other actors, um, that I, 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 I asked. To listen, who Wozniacki? Yeah. Who are these people? Let's make an effort can, can to we, meet each other. Can we get them together and have dinner? <laughs> and they all yeah. there was a pilgrimage Which to is Fairfax. Rare. Yeah. It's rare. It's yeah. rare that what uh, happens. But we also, yeah, I mean, some. And of I picked up the check, and nobody ever paid me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll buy you a coffee. I forgot. <laughs> I love you, baby. Hey, get up. Mm. Oh, I'm itchy. Well, you slept in a barn, little lady. Lucky you don't have spiders in your hair. <gasps> but I bet your daddy scared them all away, huh? I'm uh, not her dad. Name's Lee. I'm Kenny. Dad, we're in the middle of fence. There's a tractor and everything. We better get going or we won't hear the end of it. That's my boy, Ken Jr. We call him Duck, though. Where do parents name their kids Duck? We're from Fort Lauderdale. We were on our way back before things up and went bananas. 
The word is you were on your way to Macon. My family's from there. Well, Macon's on the way, and personally, I'd appreciate the company of a guy who can knock a couple of heads together if he has to. Sure, we'll tag along. Uh, this is this is where we introduce Sissy Jones. Uh, gotcha. Just, uh, gotcha. Yeah. And uh, I was on a panel with her um, at uh, a voiceover conference talking about video games, and she revealed that this was the first video game yeah. she had ever done. And she oh, never, wow. she didn't tell me right away. She told me months later, maybe even years later. Her first gig, right? Yeah. I think it was like her first gig out of, uh, wow. it was. Out of the gates. And, and she's yeah. been she was tearing a, it up ever yeah, since. Yeah. She's, she's a, yeah, she's, she's awesome. She's a force to be reckoned with. A boss. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, and, and it's tricky because I remember getting the auditions for Katja and I didn't read for Katja because it was like Danish. Yeah, screw like, this. What? I'm not doing it that. It would sound <laughs> which, I would totally offend. That. I, don't, that, I don't even know what that is. I, like, I, how do you do like this wow. finesse this? Especially when you haven't done a, you know, you have never been in a studio. Yeah, yeah, she nailed it. it also, Kenny first, here, great. Gavin Hammond, hanging Kenny? out in the corner fixing a truck. Oh, yeah. In his, in his introduction, in his elements, duck. awesome. Yeah, we'll be talking with Kenny. Lee's yeah, best he'll be friend, worst enemy at the same time. <laughs> duck is also in his element, pretending to do something. <laughs> yeah, <And> duck. Duck <laughs> is. Well, how um, can it bounce? Duck is Max Kaufman, Ryan Kaufman's son. Yep. It's and funny. for a little while, it was my son, and then oh, the Battle know, of the yeah. Sons, and he, you know, <laughs> oh, man. you but won your kid this was time. was about Duck's age Ryan. at that time. Too. Yeah, they both were the yeah, same age. Yeah, now he's like an adult. It's crazy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. What a difference seven years makes. <laughs> I know, totally. Wow, they going are, off are all grown up. Yeah. Is this, we'll just chop this I'm just going to saw this. <laughs> I guess I'm now. Might as well do some work. Look useful. <laughs> is this is it interactive sawing? It is not. Okay. Good. Not so far. I feel like there well, was... hammering it looked really The weird great. thing about all of this stuff is there was definitely... Coming from a place where we were making adventure games mostly before, um, and it was a lot of puzzle solving, going into this where it was a more cinematic-focused game, there was always attempts to find interactivity anywhere you could so there, right. I feel like there's there's lots of these moments which at some point were probably wired up as like button presses totally. until we got Make it in there saw. and then went nah why would you saw this is not fun but who oh, knows they're if building this is one fence, of those though. yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta keep those on <laughs> top the... oh. I can totally see how in, a, in some Telltale titles that this would just be a button mash exactly here. yeah <laughs> there was always stuff like that <laughs> just saw. especially in some of the later Telltale <laughs> games it was like this cutscene just goes on forever we gotta put a button press in somewhere right make yep. them wiggle the stick for a second <laughs> he's wiggle practicing up for that mm -hmm. arm later on there you go. <laughs> oh, that those, arm stuff is over. Those epic. little Sean, you know, she'll remember this. That was mm -hmm. that. Did that start in Walking Dead? It did. Yeah, yeah, that was a thing that I think came pretty late in the process. Actually, yeah. Um, there was, I mean, again, like the development time on this season, like it was really, it was really rough working yeah. on this game. Um, <laughs> ultimately, paid off in a great way, and that it right. came out as something really cool. But. Um, Telltale as a company was sort of trying to find like what's the next sort of version of yeah, a, yeah. A, a sort of cinematic interactive dialogue game we can do. And so a lot of things were tried on, especially this episode was sort of a, oh, uh, yeah. a test ground. First episode, so. of course. Yeah, I know, right? It feels very experimental in a lot of ways. It's, it was. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that works and there's a lot of stuff that then we and I, did I, and worked here and didn't And I think this was the only one where uh, the script was ready uh, days before I got there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Somet I've sometimes those scripts were coming in 20 oh, minutes before. Being yeah. written. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, no, no. Exactly. There were times where Sean would be like, okay, yeah. just start on this scene and then he yep. would go in the next room and then he'd yeah. come back. Up, yeah. I've got it. Wow. Pierre yeah. was always good at doing that, too. Mm, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, there was so, always at least... One person with their head, yeah, totally. head buried yeah. in the laptop. Or or I remember and going into the studio with times where we're like, we haven't figured this scene out yet. Right, we're totally. going to record a bunch of things, we'll get them and all. then we'll figure it out <laughs> in the we'll edit. Kind you, of. <laughs> or yeah, or we'll see you next yeah. week, probably. Well, we yeah. did that. I guess we Mostly can talk about games. it. And uh, hence the pickups. Pickups. Yeah. Right. Lots of pickups. I'm not sure if that was, was, uh, was Jolene season two, or was that? She was episode two of episode season one. Season okay, one. so then I can talk about it. So yeah, that... Um, Sissy, um, I feel like it was 400 days, but no, it, Mark mm. Darren was season two, right? Episode two. Episode, of season episode two. I, I meant episode oh. two. Yeah. Okay, this is yes. where I need your help because yes. my brain yeah, yeah, is yeah, yeah. That's, 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 no yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I mean, I you only turned <laughs> 21 once. Yeah. But, Mark and I worked um, on that together for a okay, long time. Okay, so he yeah. 
we did, we did, she, Sissy was pregnant and we did, you know, we recorded her stuff and in true telltale fashion, you know, you test it and we'd come back and have pickups and, um, Sissy calls me one day and she says, you know, um, I'm really pregnant. And so if you guys are going to need anything, I'm going to be kind of offline for a little while. So I called Mark Darren and said, told him the story and he said, all right, I'll go write some stuff, you know. And he um, <laughs> let me get on that. He wrote a bunch of stuff that may be useful. And she uh, went to a studio in L.A. We did a remote session with her. She read through it all, and her last line was, "You fucking junkie." And then she said, "Okay, do you need anything else?" And we were all good. And then she went to the hospital from the studio. Wow. <laughs> so her so her last her last professionally spoken line as a Wow. Non-mother oh, was yeah. you fucking junkie. No, we <laughs> but we all just uh, you know we spent especially on this project where we just the characters re were recurring and you're dealing with so many different emotions and um, and you know in some case dying or watching people die and and um, I don't know we just I mean all of us actors all of the actors and me and a lot of the um, Telltale guys mm -hmm. I mean we're just we hang out. Well, I mean, yeah, that's still, yeah, that's sure. another. I it mean, was like getting to know the folks that yeah. when mm -hmm. you work on a game, you usually meet the director, you meet a couple of the producers or whoever yeah. happens to be in the session. But like, yeah, yeah, we met everyone. We became a cr we met every when we made it a yeah. point to meet yeah. everyone. And it wasn't well, just like yeah. well, who and wrote you this? Guys who cares? Would it come was by like, I need to meet this person for sure. And and uh, for a while, I was doing. We called it Wine Fridays, and it would just be in my apartment. Oh, Wine and we would Fridays. just have a ton of. Developers over, and we would just hang out and play I video games Skyped and drink. I into yeah. a couple of those. Oh, I think you awesome. did, yeah. That's so and, uh, but yeah, we would invite like the actors out, and you guys mm. would all come out and get to sort of meet everybody who was totally. working on the game. And they totally. were like starstruck to meet you guys. It was just a fun. It was. It was. So fun. And, and you know, from from the actors' point of view, what was one of the things that was interesting when the first episode came out, and the the media, the game media, started writing really wonderful articles about it. They mentioned that the acting was good, mm -hmm. but they didn't mention any actors. Right. <laughs> and I remember, uh, wait a minute. I'm one of those. What actors. the hell? <laughs> Damn it. And you just leave a comment in the comments. And section. I, I, That's I, lovely. I wrote a response to, I, I forget which magazine and which writer, but I said, hey, well, hey I'm Dave Fennell. I play Lee Everton. I noticed you mentioned uh, how good the acting was, but you didn't mention any of the actors, and there was so and so and so and so and so and so. And uh, after that, uh, and I said, it, don't you? And he was like, oh, wow, no, great, love it. Right. Oh, yeah, well, happy to I mention never the knew. I, ex That's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> I, like, I never <laughs> knew. Totally forgot Lee just punches that zombie. <laughs> <laughs> punched it right in the head. He had no greater plan. You punked? Because Lee was Take a badass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is a cool comic time too. This, this is the start the of putting of, of Herschel putting the walkers in the barn, yeah. right? Dang like, it. Yeah. That oh, was like yeah. an intentional oh, call into right. what happens in the, in the comics. That was a great thing in the yeah. TV show was when that that walker fell in the well the well and they were lifting him oh. out and he tore in half. Oh, the, the, and I was like, That is oh a really tremendous visual effect. The decomposed, terrible. Yeah, the, the water's walker. gonna taste horrible. No, I know, right? <laughs> well, drink the water. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, uh Kenny. Kenny. I just call it zombie we'll juice it. then. Zombie. <laughs> we should have marketed that. Uh, I think there's a Walking Dead wine called the zombie Walking Dead. Well, there is. It's Skybound's actually. Yeah. Skybound. And it's actually quite zombie good. Juice. Excellent. <laughs> when you want to feel like a zombie. I thought I'd Look at Katya. She's just like, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there, um, weirdly, this scene too. It was it was so early on, and a lot of it is talking before this action moment. And there's a lot of questions when doing play tests and and just developers playing through of like, is this too much narrative and character and not right. enough interactivity? And so finding it was great that this scene ended up working really well, and it I think it sort of allowed us later on to feel more confident um, going forward with. Like you know the the St. John's Farm in, in episode two and yeah, having those moments where fun. you could just hang out and sit around with characters and talk, um, which ended up being something that got you really invested and then you cared about when they died if they did later. Mm -hmm. How do you feel looking at this now, Dennis? Because uh, you know yeah. it's just the way that these episodes and it, it was across all all parts of the game, but it would be just frenetic pace and then at one point it's like oh my god it shipped you know yeah. 
So I know watching back when I watched, I watched a few playthroughs just preparing for this and um, realized that all the episodes have blended together now, so that I was hmm. worried about that. But, um, but I, I would watch things and think, wow, that's, that's just how I'd probably do it still. And do you feel, I mean, obviously there's techno, technological uh, yeah. you know, advances, but how do you feel looking at this? <clears throat> um, so since I was the, <laughs> the head of the cinematics department at the time, <laughs> Uh, knowing, like, it's definitely scenes I look at and remember, oh, I remember this person working on this scene. Yeah, right. And, like, how much we rewrote stuff and then that affected their lives, and I felt really bad about it. So it's <laughs> weirdly, I think, a lot about that. And, and actually, yeah. at the end of this episode, there's, like, the moment with the, the woman in the hotel room that kills herself. And right. one of the cinematic artists, Graham Ross, for, like, a month was working on that scene and we would go and ask him to go to lunch, you know? And he would just, like, take off his headphones and look at us sullenly and just oh be like, my God, I, oh I no. can't. And, the and telltale we ask him, gaze. yeah, we're just like, what are you, what are you working on? And he was just like, I'm just listening to, like, sad music and like, <laughs> things that make me feel awful. And oh, he was just in that zone for, like, a month to, like, but it, it pays off and the stuff is really totally. good. So, but Julian, that that's cool. Instead suffering of, for you. Like, instead of the thousand he's mentally yard, ill now. You but. always gave me the thousand yard gaze. You yeah, should the have just said the telltale gaze. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also had terms. We used the word telltale as a, uh, you know, like, I'm getting telltaled right now. <laughs> and then there's, you know, and there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of versions of it. And, and apparently, as we've learned as of recent, it's not just Telltale Games. There's a, oh, know, it's a, the yeah, games no, I'm industry getting, it's a game and working industry for it is sure. yeah. just well, sadly honestly, crazy. part of this, like talking about Graham listening to sad stuff and mm -hmm. people working, you know, tirelessly and iterating and caring about what you're shipping, um, that's just yeah. when you care about something. I'm, uh, I'm going to mm -hmm. ask Graham if he that. was listening to, like, uh, like the, the Smiths, like Morrissey. the Queen There's is Morrissey, dead yeah. or totally. something. Um, that that album sure. is just, oh, mother. I hadn't yeah, heard about Graham and Mercy. Sing like that. me <laughs> to sleep. Yeah. Graham's he like method. He's yeah, like yeah, method, method, method shorts. <laughs> method cinematics. Uh, uh, it's good. good. Oh, man. I love Here's Larry. Yeah. Larry. Larry. Terry what McGovern. A, what a, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Another Amazing industry veteran. Legend oh, of voice acting. And he was... These aren't the droids I'm looking for. He yeah. was, uh, yes, yeah. he's that. Terry, he's... Terry, when I moved to uh, San Francisco Bay Area yeah. in like 1980, he was already a thing. <laughs> of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you have radio, acting. On camera, uh, too. On camera. Uh, totally. Yeah. And I just saw a post from him the other day, and he seems to be doing okay. Yeah, yeah. I, ha I hadn't well. seen, yeah, yeah. he yeah. had some tough great stuff. Guy. And, yeah. Great guy, great guy. Yeah. yeah, he was on my, I'm, I can't believe this, I was such a huge fan of DuckTales, why my Launchpad. That's funny, yep. He was Launchpad, oh. which was like my you know, childhood. The thing about Terry mm -hmm. is, this Happiness. is another like kudos to this project, is that um, he was a guy who had kind of done a lot of things, and he he even noticed, like, this is different. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is really yeah. Yeah, and a lot of a lot Striking of game dialogue different, work different. was like, um, you know, over there, you sure. get down. It wasn't, you right. know, I will kill you. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. This is gonna get processed. Don't worry, man. Yeah. It's gonna be. You're gonna sound like a ghost. I did uh, an episode two playthrough <laughs> of the season, um, so I directed episode two, and after it launched, I had a, a playthrough at my place, and a, a, a bunch of you guys were able to make it over. I think that was amazing. Dave was working on something else at the time, so you weren't able to make it up. But what's funny is um, watching, we, we basically were passing the controller around and giving the controller to Terry and letting him play his own death scene in episode oh, that's two awesome. was oh. hilarious. I bet and I, re I have footage of it, but it's um, really dark and grainy. Yeah. So that was fun. Out. That was a really fun night. Yeah. That was actually one of the nights I, where I met the, I the bulk I, I, I of think Telltale people. That was a night I scraped in. That you might have, yeah, I think we, we did yeah. like call you in uh, for yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after a while, I got yeah. bored with me and just. Uh, <laughs> just closed Hello? the computer. Is there anybody? Anybody? <laughs> totally. Hello? I don't think that. I think they muted. Is Dave me. still on? <laughs> you know, Terry, that, talking about just the sessions as well is um, when um, Nikki, who's Lily, yes. Nikki Rapp, um, that scene where her side of the, the salt block mm. scene. She, you know, a lot of times actors would just, they'd really be tweaked in there. And they mm -hmm. just, like, she just sat down and 
Yeah. Just needed to hang out she's, a little bit. She told me about that. She said after that scene. That, that was, yeah. You guys were actually like, like we're going to go to lunch. Yeah, no, her. we were. Come on. Yeah. Just eat. Yeah. A lot. Well, that and that's the thing with the writing on this game. It yeah. was so, people like, oh, did you ever like, you know, they just give you freedom to like do a take of your own. Or I'm like, the, the writing was nailed down yeah. in such an amazing way <laughs> yeah. that it wasn't like, you know, there was maybe one or two lines, but it was exactly. just yeah. little things that, that we tweaked, but the line, otherwise... The was... lines that we had to tweak were usually with those scripts that came in 20 minutes yeah, before right, the yeah, session. Yeah, yeah, Do you yeah. want two weirs in a row? And we're weird. We're weird. Yeah. We're, we're. I get that question all the time. Um, Love that shot of Larry. <laughs> well, no, Pops not that. Over the, edge. The, the question all the time about uh, the scripts and how much uh, improvising did you do mm -hmm. and... Because it sounds so natural, mm -hmm. but the writing was just that good. Yeah. yeah, and writing for a little kid. Yeah. Also, like it's, it's hard. You know, it's it's hard because kids. From a guy speak who didn't have kids, he did a great job. Yeah. That's yeah. Probably why. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and I remember <clears throat> he wrote a lot. Obviously, he was the lead writer for the season, but um, he would come in on on every other episode too and take scenes and help out and and. He was really good at sort of setting the bar. I think that that then we would try to follow through with the rest of the characters. And totally. Yeah, it was, it was just great. Well, on and another Sean, level. Sean was, um, I you know, I worked with him on a lot of other games too, and he just yeah, you he he just always had a real um, he had a real sense of knowing what he wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it was his dialogue and. But he also knew the vibe he wanted out of a scene. Mm -hmm. For sure. I, I want to know why you uh, didn't give uh, Lee a, a love interest in a sex scene. What, a sex scene? <laughs> yeah. A, 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 A. X, 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 X. Honestly, that was would you proposed be at one point. Uh, <laughs> not by the dev team, but it was a, a note from outside. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's a studio awesome. Note. Well, uh, I mean, there was tension yeah. between him and Carly, so I mean. Was it was a, uh, a fan? No, no, it was like a sort of studio note kind of deal. Uh, it was I mean, weird... it's, it's implied with Carly if she sticks around. Yeah, there's something yeah. that there's mm -hmm. tension there, you know. Mm -hmm. There's, a, there's yeah. a little peck on the cheek. Yes. Like, well, clearly we need to take her out, so. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lee's, about to, <laughs> Lee's about to get some happiness. Can't have that. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny. With the Randy Tudor mustache, right? Oh, it's yep. so great. <laughs> yeah. So much of this contention among the fans over every Kenny Easter egg versus every Randy Easter egg. Which, which, yep. which Easter egg is this mustache referring to? Yeah. It's almost always Randy. <laughs> oh. Was he the one bitten? No. Don't be crazy. It's his heart. My pills. Um, nitroglycerin pills? Yes. We're out. We've been trying to get into the pharmacy since we got here. Please try to get in there, behind the counter where the pills are. There's probably another entrance, maybe through the office. How do you know that's an office? Uh, educated guess. It doesn't matter. We need nitroglycerin pills. Please get in there. I'll keep an eye on my dad. Everyone else should get comfy and look for anything useful. We could be in here a while. I'm starting to think this drugstore isn't a permanent solution. You're right. This ain't exactly Fort Knox. What do you suggest? We need as much gas as possible so we can all get out of downtown Macon. Fast. Agreed. Then I'll head out and get gas. There's a motel not too far from here, out towards the end of Peachtree. I'll work my way towards it and then loop back, siphoning what I can. You know your way around? Local? Born and raised. If you're gonna do that, Here's a walkie-talkie if you get in a tight spot. Hopefully, you won't need it. Cool. Clementine's got the other one. Check in with her and get back here as soon as you can. And you, what's your name? It's Lily. My dad's Larry. Keep a good eye on him. These boys will work on getting you your medicine. That's right. And you, you keep an eye on that front door. You're our lookout. It's Doug. You got it. And I'm Carly. Okay, Carly. You'll shift in with Doug when he needs it. For now, get some rest. You're a good shot, and I'd like to keep it that way. You got it, boss. Now get him those pills. We can't let anything happen to Ducky. I know, hon.
Uh, this is a, a nice downbeat moment that um, Nick Herman worked on a bunch who was also a director on this season in later episodes and future games that, with Telltale and now I work with. Don't move it. Um, Look out. And started Telltale oh. when he was like 11. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Know, he right? was hired right out <laughs> of yeah. high school, still only basically. like 26. I don't yep. get it. <laughs> and, uh, but this scene was, I remember being just really challenging because it's such a small downbeat moment between Lee and Clementine and they're really just kind of like moving a desk out of the way and kind of doing little action interactions in the scene. But all of those things feel like they mean something when mm -hmm. you're doing yeah. it. Like the performances are awesome. It's shot really well. And um, this ended up being one of those great moments that just sets up their relationship for the season. Well, and that's really cool. And then talking with you and bringing up Nick and Grady and all, you know, all these people that like, I mean, truly, this was kind of like fresh faced Absolutely. Right, mm -hmm. literally, maybe yeah. right out of high school. I don't know, or early college. You know, and it's sure. just, and look at you now. I'm yeah. just. Yeah. It's so cool to see everybody's journey, whether they're they were still with Telltale to the when it was closed or where you're at now. It's, it's good old it, Kent sitting to I, my right, right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, yeah. But you I'm know too, and I was around. <laughs> were you fresh out of high school? No, I was fresh out. Of, I was somewhat fresh out of college. Okay, yeah. right. I had only had one gig before Telltale. They only uh they. they when Telltale went under, you know, it was a shock for a lot of people. And uh, but the good thing is, there's a lot of Telltale DNA absolutely that mm -hmm. has spread mm -hmm. through the. You know, sure. it's it's Thank funny because a lot of us came from Lucas Arts, and that's where I met Dan and Kev. I didn't actually meet Kevin there, but I knew Dan really well. And um, uh, and th those kind of seeds went out and started Telltale mm -hmm. and other other companies. Nihilistic was one of them. Um, and then the same ha has happened with Telltale. And it's just, you know, creative people do creative things. Yeah. And, right. and um, you're not going to keep them corralled up for long. Well, but I just feel like there was such a wealth of that at Telltale. Well, there was, was such so many good people. chemistry between the people. I, I feel like, and yeah. again, you know, yeah. I'm, this, I'm not trying to like, well, other game companies I've worked with, I just don't have that. I don't know them. So maybe right. that's part of the problem but yeah. I mean there was such I a, would like a family. to <laughs> those videos that you posted after Telltale Close I mean literally I watched that like a thousand times in a row and it just brought me to tears because even though it was such a stressful environment there yeah. was so much like fun yeah. and yeah. laughter and family look at, it was yeah. look family. at what came out of it yeah. Yeah. yeah look at what came out of it so that's that's a really and special thing in so many ways I mean uh, decisions that were made you could fault people for doing the things that caused it to go under, but um, they were trying to do amazing things, and yeah. sometimes they just did, uh, case yeah. in point. Mm -hmm. Right, right, yep. Indeed. Yeah, even, yes. even through the end of Telltale, it always felt like some place where it was just, there were so many passionate people there you could just collaborate with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It never Everyone. felt like you're working in a vacuum, it felt like a, a, a village together. Yeah. Trying and you, to weren't, you weren't the only one putting in extra hours. No, too, right? everyone, you're still here? Most, almost, most people there believe probably way too hard in whatever we were making. Yeah, yeah Dennis, well, you posted a few pictures of the sunset. Finger. <laughs> or sunrise. Or, or, I'm sorry, the, yeah, I'm those sorry are not sunrises. the sunset. Yeah, the those sunrise. Happened. It's the inverse <laughs> of the sunset. <laughs> right, it's I, I when think, the sun I goes think, up. I think everybody who <laughs> has worked there and part of uh, so many good projects oh will wear that as a badge of honor uh, throughout their careers. For sure. Yeah. Well, and I just think that, you know, I mean, you look at other industries, too, like the film industry or even, you know, non-creative fields. It's hard to make good things. Yeah. You know, that doing it the right way is, t is doing it the hard way. Lord and with knows people I've seen you, enough bad movies. Yeah, yeah, I mean. And people you enjoy working with. I mean, I think that there are people that are able to pull stuff out, but you might have contentious you know, energies with the people that you're having to collaborate with. I just use a lot of big words in one sentence. Wow. I'm you so like, impressed. Oh, look, at, like your little, look at your little cheat sheet. <laughs> Obviously, we're not drinking the bourbon. I yet. haven't used the word tacit yet, but I'm going to. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, people you tacit. like working with matters a lot. It yeah. is often rarer than it should no, be. No, and I think in, in game development in general, too, there's, there is that feeling of a weird, smaller version of a Brotherhood of War kind of thing where yes. it's like, yes. you know. Yes. Yeah. Or we're in the trenches, right? You're, uh, yeah. yeah, you're basically game. like... But with no mustard gas or bullets coming. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. It's the, the weak version of it. But uh, but no, I think you're right. It's like you, uh, in the, the thing I posted, and there's just random videos, like some of those are like 3 a.m. and people are playing acoustic guitar yeah. and we're joking. Yeah. It's like you kind of have to do that, especially working on material like this where it's so serious yeah. and you're listening to screams in your totally. headphones all day and then you have to find those bright yeah. moments to kind of... Pull yourself out of it. I just, I think that even in the painful parts, there was a lot of laughing and 
like we really we were constantly oh, in the cracking studio. Up. except yeah. for the oh final God. episode of that this was that season. was rough that was like and yeah. i mean that was dark cloud yeah. but otherwise we had such an amazing time in the studio it felt it almost felt too good i would leave and i would just feel so insanely grateful yeah, yeah. to be doing what i'm doing it was like pinch yeah, myself. totally. I'm working with these well, people that I want to just like hang out with all the time. Yeah, we're to laughing get our asses such off. Great words. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Man. <laughs> yeah. Studio Jory was definitely a second home. Oh, for, yeah. Yeah. For a God good chunk. I yep. know. Yeah. 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 I remember your. I remember you came yep. in, and I don't think you How knew. How did Carly get in there? I don't think you knew that you were dying and you were just thumbing through the script and then I heard you start swearing in there like <laughs> <laughs> and it was just it was just you and I Jory obviously and Jake yeah. that day and I and you kind of had a cold or something and I remember it, it was like the lowest volume other than Camp Man who was really low but it was just so uh, it was great and and um and it, you know, it was like a two-hour. Like we dragged that death over two hours. Oh, but, the um, final. You're yeah. Wow. And I got to hear that was the. I thankfully you did record before yeah. me, and it was one of the few and times we, I actually got, got to hear, to hear it, yeah. him someone in other my, than me in my headphones. Well, <laughs> you would have been I'm amazing dead, too, I'm but dead. it was very effective to hear Dave's oh, performance no, was, on yeah. that. Well, was, you, I, I tell you what else. Um, I intended to go in and be an actor and make the sounds of crying right but i actually ended up crying yeah. right Ooh. yeah it and, was it was serious uh, oh, yeah and that that was kind of crazy because that surprised me but i also said well okay cheers can yeah. we just go with it yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. and we were all bleary eyed on our side just being exhausted too and and it was just one of those things where the process melted away yeah. and you were just in there and and you know if if it had been, uh, you know, one session and I had to die and cry, and uh, I don't think that would have happened. But right. I, I had lived with this character for so long. Oh, we'd and done so many sessions, too. So many sessions, and there was so much I liked about uh, this character, who he was, and, and the relationship uh, uh, with Clementine. And one of my hooks was, I'm a, I'm a dad. Right. I have a daughter. I remember you talking about that, yeah. And I could just relate to how I feel about her and how much I wanted to protect her all her life, um, except those teenage years when she hated me. No. Right. <laughs> those are gone. No. Yeah. She, <laughs> now she I actually, want... her teenage years weren't that bad. But um, I just related to this character. And when I got to that scene, it was just like, whoa, where did these yeah. tears come from? Yeah. Man. And yeah. again, the damn that writing! Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, damn yeah. That it was writing. good. Damn it was yeah. Writing. It was the same experience for me. I you know I I had this moment like well you know acting and like yeah. think of something that's really depressing and sad and just bring yourself there. But no, it was so organic. Yeah, you didn't so, need to think about it. No. And you were like moving us through you know because normally we'll stop and you know do like a. A few takes, or let's try that again. But you were moving through it, yeah, in a very you subdued were, yeah, you manner. Guys were you in wanted it. to just keep it going, uh, which was, uh, yeah. And Jory, I remember that. I both of them. There were times where um, a few other actors too. We just always were. We, there was no stopping and starting. Right. We just he, rolled. Well, the and whole it wasn't time. even his typical like, great, moving on. Exactly. It was like, it was like, like moving on. Is Jory okay? He's not speaking yeah, in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? Yeah. You're just like, just keep going. I remember him. He was all teary on on those too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was, uh, and I, I, you know, it's funny, Gavin had a similar, there was, I forget what the scene was, and he did such a great job, and then we were, like, looking at him, and we are push the button, you all right? And he goes, yeah, man, I'm fine, I'm just acting. <laughs> I was going to bring up Gavin, too, yeah, there's, oh, there's times Gavin. with Gavin where it's, like, he'd be mid-cry, and, and then, like, like Oh cough or something and be like, oh, sorry, anyways, let's try that again. Yeah. You guys want to get a burrito? I was like, yeah, totally. Oh, wow. <laughs> can, you so wait, can you wait to order? Because I really want to yeah. put in my yeah, two cents. Is... Episode one has the most puzzly stuff in it. Yeah. And then episode two has like one more puzzly moment. And then episode three, maybe a little one with the train. And then we right. slowly started kind of getting away from the things that slow the pacing of the yeah. story down and, and make you... Uh, Try to keep you in that headspace of the characters and the relationships the Classic whole time. Classic yeah. spot. The motor in. The motel. The tra sign. Travelier, oh, Travelier Hotel. Motel. That guy's just hanging out up there. Yeah, hello. That guy's got like a school jersey on, but he looks like he's 80. 
I know he's been decomposing. For yeah. Quite Didn't the apocalypse uh, start like yesterday? I know, the RV. It's like five days ago, and you know, everybody's already yeah. falling apart. Every time I see <laughs> RVs, I think of Breaking Bad and this game. That's yeah, funny. yeah, uh, totally. Uh, I think this. We've got RVs locked down. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Motel uh, was uh, the the motorin was based on. I, f- I think I just read this somewhere. I can't remember if Jake was just talking about it, but uh, based on a a motel that was like five minutes down. Uh, away from Telltale, just oh, off the highway. So <laughs> oh, I think I, yeah. I think I remember hearing that. Is it that still too. there? It's still there. Julia, wow. I think you were telling me that the <laughs> Clem's house is based off Jake's house. It's Jake's childhood home. Jake's childhood oh, that they still live in. I did not know. Yeah, his that. parents still live wow. in the tree. I don't know if the tree house is there too, but that would be awesome. Yeah. 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 Sean, Sean told me that uh, Lee Everett is based off a professor he had in college. Didn't Nick Mastriani do this scene? I can't remember. I thought I remember this, that was the this, case. This one definitely, I know, went through some iterations because it was a really puzzly moment. I always look back on the scene as being like one of the most complicated things we've like ever it done. Was and I really kind of still to this day yeah. can't believe yeah. that it's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually something design wise I was always felt like I was chasing in future Telltale games. It's like I want to make something as cool as sure. the motor oh. and it was always kinda it was always hard. All right, now I have the pillow. I actually remember I actually forget how to finish this scene. Oh, now that I have the pillow, I know I can kill a zombie silently yes. somewhere, but I remember which zombie it is. We never made something with so many stations. Like the stations are kind of technically complicated to set up. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so we never made something with quite as much like stealthing around right, as this. Right. I think I can kill some zombie silently now. Is it that guy over there? Is it this fella? Yeah. That one. Uh, maybe. There we go. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, these puzzles are complicated enough that I can't even necessarily yeah. memory my way back through all of them. Mm. S- s- only dreams now. Boom. <laughs> Thanks, Carly. I'm sure that silenced it. Well, and yeah, right. <laughs> I didn't hear it. <laughs> it's sort yeah. of a, a yeah. little bit of a legacy adventure game moment mm-hmm. where it's like, use pillow on zombie yeah. equals right, right, Carly right, coming right. over and shooting. Well, the team at large, but engineering team uh, also did a great job with this game, trying to figure out all the weird ways we could take this tool that was built for making adventure games this one thing and then and do this and do this and yeah. a lot of these little moments which you would think i mean if you're in in unity or unreal this is like a a quick thing to set up oh, but in, uh, yeah, in telltale tool it would be like just because it was made for a different purpose originally it was all stuff that was being kind of like retrofitted and invented to make these moments possible as we kind of went along right and I know I, I need to, the, like, push the car at some point. I know I need the bolts to break that window without uh, the, the spark noise. plug. Uh, where, yeah, where, the spark plug. Which we, I weirdly learned is a real thing. Like, yeah, I remember finding out that that I've was a real thing. I've never tried it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to try it. But, I don't know, people figured it out. Yeah. And, uh, felt like a little win. So that's oh, good. if I were to play Here's this and control thing. it, it would take 14 <laughs> hours to get there. I, in fact, when yeah. I first played it, I couldn't get out of the bike. Yeah. I'm not hearing the audio right now, so I'm trying to muscle memory my way. Like, wait, how did these puzzles Yeah, go? totally. <laughs> uh, so, doing my best. It's good. Well, and that's, again, one of the evolutions coming from adventure games. A lot of times, in, they try to make uh, adventure game puzzles are sort of a more open-ended, where you can kind of come back to the same place over and over again. And, and with Telltale, as we progressed forward from this episode, the idea was always to try and keep the story moving forward at every point. And so we ended up Losing a lot of those moments where Gee, you have to go back to places. There, uh, is that hatchet going to get used? It I might. Uh, it might come back Max. later on. Oh. I will admit, I remember when I first came to Telltale. I finally sat down to try to play Sam and Max season three, and they it's just really gave hard. me so many options of where to go at the beginning. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell does yeah. the game want me to do?" Yeah. And I would go to every subsequent location. Yep. And exhaust everything I thought I could do there, and then be like, "I have no idea what to do now." <laughs> yeah. No. Those. Those games are tough. Yeah. <laughs> Fun, but tough. I like the hint system in Back to the Future that has told me exactly what to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you... <laughs> Glenn is voiced by Nick Herman. Right? Oh, yeah. Good yeah. point. Oh, yeah. There you go. God, that's yeah, right. I know. It was awesome. Yeah. I've listened to a bunch of voice lines recently for this definitive edition and, and realizing, like, oh, shit, I could totally forgot that was Nick. And he, li- <laughs> and he delivers pizza. Oh, yeah. That's what he, that's what he does. And sympathy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm wondering if Glenn I mean this is the melding of universes but after he leaves them is that when he when he goes to Atlanta yeah. and meets up with yep obviously I guess 
Yeah, no, we definitely yeah. started with more tie-ins. Um, Didn't work out too well for him. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, he lost. He lasted a good amount of time yeah. for a walkie. Uh, yeah. Well, he did. Yeah, he had a, he had a Kenny-like yeah. revival. So episode two, um, let's see. There was a, a, one of the big moments was uh, people sort of realizing um, Clementine was paying attention to how they were acting. That was a, one of the big sort of focal points of episode two was. Um, the moment with uh, with Danny St. John where you can there kill him. There we go. Get that. <laughs> Get axe. that iconic yeah. X. And uh, if you oh, and if shit. you choose to do it, looking over and seeing Clementine looking at you in horror, mm-hmm. and that was a big moment for yeah. players realizing, yeah. like, oh, she's watching oh, wow. and yeah. processing this. I remember that. That was forward. that was my scene in that episode. Yeah, I was gonna say you were working on that one for a while. Yeah, right? that was my first ever Walking Dead scene. Was the inside of the, the barn escape. The barn. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. So episode two, one of the sort of original um, passes on it. So Chuck Jordan, who worked a lot sort of structurally on on helping um, set things up for for success, um, had written a, a version of episode two a while, like way long before episode one was oh, interesting. even half done. Um, is at the time there was this notion that all episodes were going to be written kind of a little more concurrently and then we could get everything done in a, a quicker time <laughs> but sure as yeah. happens <laughs> uh, well. things what could, pushed, what could yeah. go wrong and then as we were developing um episode one and you find those moments it's like oh people really do care about the characters and the callbacks and here's how uh interactive narrative is working in a in a different way in the telltale games than than even we thought when we were just starting out and so episode two had to go through a an extensive sort of uh, rewrite process at the very last minute. As I'm sure that was when you guys were getting scripts, all, you know, Probably. the day of your uh, recordings, yeah. uh, unfortunately. That's not what I remember. <laughs> but yeah, it was interesting <laughs> looking back at the episode two script and thinking, like, oh, this totally makes sense. Like, it's written fantastically for where the episode one was like six months ago. That's just right. Because we were just yeah, kind yeah. of finding new things <clears throat> out as we went. Well, um, and how much do as someone someone who plays the games, uh, the choices of people playing it, like oh, how much definitely. does that, I mean, obviously huge. it is a huge effect yeah. to the, so, but but that must be add to the pressure of like, oh God, you know, we thought that people would actually like this character and in fact, you know, 90% of them chose to whatever. That's exactly. Oh so. yeah, the data. Segue into, the data. yeah, it's huge in uh, Duck, who we mentioned <laughs> earlier as being this sort of like R. more R. stereotypical annoying kid character right. in, a, in a game. And yeah. Uh, he, there was the built to the moment uh, of the you know Kenny having to choose to shoot him in the um, oh, in man. the woods in episode yeah. three, and yeah. that whole moment wouldn't work if you didn't feel some sympathy for Duck. Yeah. And when episode one and two came out, we realized like a lot of the player feedback was like, "Oh, this kid's annoying. Can I just get a gun and shoot him?" <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so and funny. and I remember like Sean and Jake going, "Oh crap! We, you know, in order this thing we're setting up in episode it's three not to work, work is not going to work <laughs> yeah. unless people care about him." So I think in like it was a matter of days. Uh, they created oh, that's so the the little motor in puzzle with uh, Detective Duck. Yes. Um, and that whole thing was purely added at that's the very last so minute awesome. just to make sure people cared enough about him when the the murder scene came up later. Murder. Yeah, that's, I, that's, <laughs> that's not me. For I play somebody who gets taken down by zombies, and I am only remembering this because I did the it's a hotel <laughs> girl scream, and literally, thankfully, I was going on vacation because I was like two octaves lower. Yeah. <laughs> it basically was a voiceover live and learn. I'll never do that right. again. I was like, was that the episode so three, fun. Screaming Girl? Maybe. Oh, my, maybe it is. Which yeah, because I don't remember. Ha- I don't remember yeah. having yeah, all it was. those lines. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I, I thought I remember something better. making the, we added the scene to make Duck likable. I thought I remember we, in episode four make we, duck we, we made <laughs> uh, we added scenes yeah. to make, make Ben great again. less likable. <laughs> Wasn't the stuff where he like <laughs> fucked up and like didn't protect Clementine in the first scene like added pretty late? Probably. <laughs> I think I only remember because yeah. that was my scene, and later they they uh, updated it so that mm. Ben like abandons Clementine yeah. when she's surrounded by zombies. Uh, because they yeah. were worried none of people were gonna <laughs> drop Ben off the bell tower. Yeah, right. That's true. Yeah, people uh, because, not because yeah. Clementine liked right. Ben, that almost overrided any other feelings they had toward yeah. Ben. Right. Despite him being like a huge cause of most of the world's of the problems they encounter in the story.
Hmm. I think uh, I think. Well, I you, too, here's yeah. another little random tidbit I learned from uh, from Sean uh, at PAX West last year. The Brooklyn sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It's was good. there obsession with the movie Kangaroo <laughs> Jack, oh, which that's... I can't yeah. believe I never really picked funny. it up yeah. because I I've weirdly seen that movie like five or six times because really I think it's cool. hilarious. But it's Kangaroo Jack. So when he showed me the picture of the kangaroo <laughs> with the Brooklyn sweatshirt, I my mind yeah. literally oh, exploded cool. out of my skull. That's and I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize too in in development. There's a lot of choices that you make. Like all day, you're just yeah. making choices, right? And oh, some of them are just like, yeah, concepting. Like sometimes it's a quick part of the process when you're like out of time and you just make. There's like a funny call like that, you know? Yeah, like, oh, right. it should be the kangaroo sweatshirt, <laughs> kangaroo jack sweatshirt. And it's like it's a thing that it's kind of funny. It gets a laugh at the time, right? And then it becomes a thing that's in the whole season, that's, and you have yeah, to look totally. at it. Like, yeah, Clem's rainbow jacket in season two oh, was like I a thing that, that was like, I, think, I think Ainsworth. I and then it becomes puppy. legendary. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I noticed that uh, back at Herschel's, um, maybe it was Herschel's, where the cameras s- stopped on the address, 5240. Was that something? I was going to ask you then. It was just a number. Yeah, I don't it's remember. not like yeah. 1138. Oh, I don't, not that I know of. Yeah. <clears throat> well, so, um, yeah, speaking to the, uh, the, the voice performances, like obviously you guys know that the Clementine relationship is the, the key to all of this working. Oh, and, yeah. and everyone, fan-wise loves it and appreciates everything but also uh from the development team wise like we would get those performances back and that was um the first thing we would start with and it would be one of those things where in those great moments like even even like funny like just random like little moments that you would never think like you're just in the booth recording uh what maybe seems like a a a fun small character moment like those wave files would get passed around the office like people would hear those and it would the weirdest little things could inspire someone to go absolutely you know what would be awesome like this this read the way they did it like what if we change the scene a little bit to be like this and it would actually influence the scenes as they were taking shape and it was so so definitely great script starting with for sure and then your guys's performance coming in always being amazing was a thing that one was just a pleasure to work with you know as someone who's kind of helping on that stuff but also awesome for the whole rest of the team at Telltale who was oh, that's really cool. back cool. there and it was always every time a new batch of uh, voice lines would come in there was always like sort of a rush of excitement and <laughs> someone would go and start working on a scene and work on just a small little moment with you know Lee and totally. Clementine talking and it was just a little 30 second clip and then they would just bring people around to their desks and be like oh check this out isn't this cool that's and, so no, great that's awesome great. I was at a convention and somebody cosplayed Doug. He was standing in front oh, of me for so forever, and I was—he's like, "Don't you recognize me?" I'm like, "No, yeah. sorry." And it was Doug Tobacco. He, he, he had a little laser, a pen with a little oh, laser man. pointer on it, and he's like, "I'm Doug," and I was like, "Oh, that's wow. pretty great." R- weird, Hang weird on. piece of Security. trivia. <laughs> Obviously, it's probably mostly <laughs> widely known that was RT guy at the time. Yeah, uh, Doug Tobacco, who's, who's a awesome. genius, by the way. Yep. If, if you're and out there, Doug. In episode two, the laser pointer thing. We'd just hired uh, some new cinematic artists to help on episode two, and Grady Standard was, his first thing was, Uh, we're like, oh, learn how to use the tool and work with this laser pointer and sort of do stuff. So apparently, he actually made, he actually, the laser pointer stuff that Doug does in episode two is actual Morse code for something. Oh, like that's he, Because he, oh, he, he was new and like learning the tool, so he just spent like a couple weeks oh just like God. making that Oh, that's thing, so awesome. <laughs> yeah. Which was pretty awesome. And we don't know what it says, though? Uh, I've heard different versions. Mm. <laughs> it probably says, I hate working for Dennis now. <laughs> 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 well, there's something for a fan, to, right there's something for a fan to obsessively dig into. <laughs> well, I remember, too, like the... Um, uh, well, I think I... Well, I I think it was Ryan Kaufman that quoted it, but maybe you'll know. He said that he said voice is the gas that Telltale runs on because it really was, you know, there's concept art and ideas and and uh, but uh, like for a first episode, you those files came in well in, in advance. I have I actually have the the visuals that I had to show you guys in the mm-hmm. very beginning, and it's like a bunch of a bunch of characters and tea poses and like a barn and you know it, there wasn't much to show you <laughs> no no not at all but we I mean, also that's pretty common in in, yeah. in games yeah but. i mean but then it, then as the as the episodes went on there was obviously i mean 
you guys kind of defined who you were. Well, I remember playing the first episode after you when it was released, and it was like, oh shit, because you're, you know, obviously right. we don't see the animation. We don't right. have, <laughs> totally. you know, Jared's awesome music. We don't have the, <laughs> the, the, the sound, the ambiance, the, you know, I mean, it really is, it was like watching a whole new game. Yeah. So easy to take myself out of critiquing my performance and just be like, wow, this is. I mean, yeah. number one foam finger fan here. That, I love is, the that game. So, I am a huge fan of the That was so game. my experience, too, when I watched the playthrough. And you're, you're just in it like, oh, this is a movie or a TV yeah. show. Yeah. Then, and what's going to happen next? Oh, uh, the, this person gets to decide. And, and remember the uh, yeah. all the nonverbal stuff. We went – actually, Jory helped me, and we just figured out a um, – we figured out a script that we had every every actor do – and it, it kind of was born out of, again, ju- out of Jurassic Park, um, is uh, getting people to breathe normally, breathe scared, breathe in pain, um, and, and not just a couple breaths, because when if something happened to you in real life and you said, oh, my God, my leg, then you wouldn't just be all <laughs> silent. You know, you'd be like, ah. Right, oh, yeah. Man. And um, that was a lot of the, and, and that's where I think a lot of chore artists got a hold of that stuff and um and then requests started coming in hey next time that dave's up will you get him to maybe have him say like ah and little half mm-hmm. words and and that kind of stuff was and yet not great. one ow not one <laughs> ow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No. damn it speaking of people that went on to do uh, other things as well um Definitely worth mentioning. Gary Witta was involved with season yeah. one. Gary and Witta. Yeah. Yeah. on episode Gary. four. Right. He's done pretty um, good for himself. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, Book I remember of Eli. Yes, yeah. he wrote know. the Book of Eli, which is an amazing movie. Amazing movie. Uh, Plus, he's like the Star Wars guy, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. On, uh, on Rogue One. Rogue One, <clears> thank yeah. you. I'm a uh, but he, I remember him being in some of the writer's rooms for the season early on when we were kind of trying to break stuff. And I, I remember one of his... Uh, I feel like a big contribution of his was he always pushed things to go darker. Like I yeah. feel like people were sort of stepping their toes and like, oh maybe, maybe you, maybe like his finger gets hurt, and he's just like, what? What if the what if they rip what if his the, arm the baby off? comes <laughs> back to life as a zombie and like yeah. he's someone yeah. who's like, oh okay, yeah, good point. He also <laughs> yeah. was really tapped into what people were saying in forums and things, and he would like I remember he was in in on some sessions once, and he was talking about people that were complaining. And he said, um, he said, there are people that walk 12 miles for fresh water, for God's sake. And he's like, <laughs> in his accent. That's awesome. He, um, the Chicago. Yeah. He, <laughs> yeah right. right. He's a British Chicago. Yeah. He loves it when I do an impersonation of him, by And we way. all sound like, like, <laughs> Ma- yeah, we all sound like Dick Van Mary Dyke, Poppins. you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that bad. We don't sound that bad. Uh, I do. <laughs> I, I remember being in session with him, and, and uh, that was when the language was always the, uh, uh, Saltiest, mm-hmm. yeah. And, oh, yeah. And the he, things we were, I said, does your mother know you writing stuff like this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's no, he's a big, big believer in just like just get down and dirty in the scene to make it real. And yeah, yes. it showed it helped a lot. Indeed, he did some work on season four, didn't he? I he was in incredibly early uh, writers' rooms. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it didn't end up uh, incredibly. Yeah. Well, yeah. Incredibly was, season four early. had kind of a wacky thing where there was yeah. a whole a whole version of it before I even got on. So well, I have never seen any Gary Widow versions of season four. Well, I'll have to ask him about it one day. Yeah. Ooh, was like there uh, was there any modeling like <laughs> like just for fun Easter egg stuff of zombies after people? I remember there was a couple. Well, that episode five has those contest winners, yeah. right? Yeah. There are oh, contest awesome. winner zombies in the final. Isn't there more than one? Is there more than one? I thought there were like oh, three. That's the guy, right. who, gets his head, the guy who gets his head cut in half that's is a contest right. winner. I that's awesome. It's actually that. notably the zombies that look way better than the that other zombies. That doesn't yeah. seem to be a great prize to get. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Mom, they were you in a video game. And the, I got a job. <laughs> the character of Bree in the fourth episode was, was the big contest winner, if oh, I recall correctly. Interesting. She was completely right. based off a fan. Wow. She gets a horrible death. Yeah, with contestants yeah. coming all out. <laughs> yeah, Bree was. Yeah. Which you imagine a Walking Dead fan is probably extremely happy. About. No, that's oh, awesome. That's, that's cool. exactly yeah. what they that's want. Yeah. That's exactly what they want. Yeah, that's a sad moment. That's a different Telltale property. Let me have a One few of the writer- lines uh, <laughs> get killed and come back as a zombie and yep. chomp a, on somebody. Yeah, that's a cool thing. And that's his brother. Oh yeah. man, Lee's poor brother. Why? I remember never put this. That together. I remember this. Ah. Oh. Yeah, this was a, this was all these. We had some rough. 
We had some yeah, rough, dark. rough concepts. Mm-hmm. This episode has like a suicide uh, and yeah. it has murdering what your own hell? brother as a zombie and it has yep. people's children dying. It's a lot. See you later, little Chuck, buddy. Chuck the hobo. Yeah. Who was one of my favorite characters? Brief, brief that he be. Chuck the Hobo. Voiced oh, by Chuck Roger Jackson. Hobo. Yeah, I liked. He was like a wise elder that pops in for the train and. I distinctly and remember. Dies. <laughs> I distinctly remember he used to live a little longer in episode four. Mm. And I remember reading a bit that like you needed to get coins out of the binocular thing. You need to like uh, so that you could. I mean, you need to get coins out of a newspaper machine so you could look through the binoculars at the boats out in the water. And uh, Lee yeah. couldn't figure out how to get it out, and then nice. Chuck Chuck would just walk the up and smack shot. it, and all the money would just fall out. <laughs> and he would just look at Lee and Lee be speechless, and he would just say, "Old hobo trick." Uh, <laughs> I just good. love that he's a hobo. Yeah. Oh man. And Roger Jackson. He's also, a I showed Lee's fi- I showed Chuck's final stand where he saves Clementine with that shovel. Oh nice. man. I remember just thinking I reused the animation of Danny St. John getting killed with the pitchfork. Good. Just, he, just, he just uses the shovel instead of a pitchfork. God, there was a version where Doug and Carly, the Doug and Carly choice got swapped up to the beginning of the episode. So Whoa. the game opened with that. So many walkers. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of walkers throughout the Where's seasons. Where's my screwdriver? <laughs> <laughs> in my shoulder. But I feel like uh, season one was definitely, I mean, because this was like, you know, the obviously fresh new outbreak. But mm-hmm. it's really cool to see all these awesome zombies. Yeah. I like that a lot of the season one walkers seem to kind of tell like a story. Like you can mm-hmm. kind of like tell like this walker's been through some stuff. Right. Yeah. Like, every walker is like, yeah. a, every walker like was clearly a person and they were going through something. Right. That one's walking with a bit more sadness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every walker was once a, a dad. A <laughs> Definitely mentioning Sean Ainsworth uh, who worked a bunch on these games and mm-hmm. was directing 400 Days and uh, was around at Telltale for a while after this. Um, but he made this really cool sort of single camera energy to this scene that <clears throat> I think there was a a feeling of maybe we need a big choice up front that just shows people who are new to just Telltale Games in general, like, hey, your choices are gonna matter. Right. Um, and it but the the problem ended up being that you never you didn't know either of the characters. It was right. just a random like, okay, am I choosing right. the guy because he has a funny sheet t shirt or right. the the woman because she has a gun and uh, it didn't mean as much. So, but yeah, there was a time where that got swapped into the beginning and the game just opened with that and it felt. That's crazy. Place. Yeah. Whoa, that was crazy. Cool. The blend. Yeah. Yeah. That's just a crazy blend. Blend to an idol. Good tricks in this episode. <clears throat> Shut up, Doug. What's on Doug's shirt? That is a barrel ope. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say barrel. I just, saw, I, just I don't know how I just noticed that. But. Um. So Graham Enable, who used to work at Telltale for a bit. Um, as an artist and then has gone to work on it like uh, and Pixar and all sorts of things cool. and uh, made Grickle and did puzzle agent stuff oh yeah um, yeah he's like yeah. draws all that um, he had done this uh, barrel Oak character and it had been put on a shirt and um, Doug Tobacco the actual Doug Tobacco yeah, the liked real. it and so it just ended up being like I mean he would literally wear the, the sandals like this oh this totally probably yeah. taken <laughs> from a photo and just Ab- modeled absolutely life, so. barely a character design uh, I want I want a barrel oak shirt I, I have one we made them yeah oh man it's really cool I sadly wore it all the time at first and then now it's all just he's useless. also voiced by Jared I know now right? you want to huh? oh yeah Jared, Jared that's right Jared did yeah. Jared the music, music. Yeah. yeah what I see. I can't hear it right now because we're all we're all yabbering away. But <laughs> that's hilarious. How am I forgetting all this? I told you, seven years. Brain. Yeah. Brain. yeah these were the days when we like, <laughs> like we what? need a we need a guy to do yeah. this. And we yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and Jared is also an amazing, you know, actor. Yeah. So it works out. And musician. He does, like yep. you just said, all the music. 
and still yeah. still does. I have did. to save Doug still just because I know it's the contrary <laughs> yes. choice. Yes. <laughs> no, we well so that was the thing is like Doug was a friend of ours at yeah. Telltale and and Sean and Jake Ooh. knew him really well. Uh, yeah, we, like worked on the Idle Thumbs yeah. website with them for years and so they thought but we all internally thought 99% of people were going to save Doug just because we know him and right. he's a good guy. Right. Right. And we're like, right. oh, no one really knows Carly. And basically more people, most people save Carly, which was kind of a saddening fact afterwards. And we're like, sorry, Doug. No sorry, man. You. Yeah. <laughs> no one would save you. It's like, That's why yeah. in that picture he just posted recently, he put hashtag save Doug. Yeah. I was like, why did he do that? Because I yeah. can't remember anything. He's <laughs> Doug. That's right. Yeah. Nope. Turned out that uh, she she had a gun, and we thought because he was like the the techie sort of guy that seemed like he could be useful in the future for doing things. Right. Uh, but it was really just she had a gun. Right. And yeah. The gun said, wins. Like, that wins. In the the immediacy apocalypse. of the gun is hard to beat. Yeah. We, we had this whole puzzle in episode two designed where he'd set up like a warning system with tin cans around the motor and perimeter. Oh, that's and, yeah. Um, yeah, and then it turned out no one saved him. And we're like, well, oh, I guess we put less effort. In the world of The Walking yeah. Dead, don't get too, <laughs> you know, attached Kirk, to anyone. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it might be useful. Oh, dead. Doesn't he do something tech? Oh, <laughs> favorite character can go at any time. I think so. And yeah, believe we, me, as Lee Everett, I know. I know. <laughs> I know, and it was funny because I, I think everyone had that comment. in the back of their mind coming yeah. in, like, do I die today? Oh, yeah. yeah. No. I, I got to live with that for, like, three more seasons after this. You conditionally die today. <laughs> Are you guys going to kill her? No. Trevelier. Well, I think the conditional death thing, too, was a big, that was a big uh, hurdle for the development side because we had all these people that were conditionally there or not there. Yeah. Mm. And the complexity of that as time goes by was, like, just horrendous. It just makes every piece of work that involves the conditional characters exponentially more expensive and complicated to make. Glenn's like, I'm out. I'm out. It's like I've had my cameo time in this game. I have to go back to my my award-winning comic series. It's funny. I'm going to Atlanta. (laughs) Yeah, it should be safer there. Less people. Yeah. (laughs) That's like the last place on the face of the planet. I'm like, I already have my escape route. It's still like the Sierras. Oh, totally. Yeah. I don't know. That's somewhere. Yeah. It's Catalina. Out, out to the wilderness. Town. Yeah. <laughs> Fear the Walking Dead. They they finally, that, they had that dude on the yacht. And then, oh, yeah. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. Um, oh, I'm forgetting his name. I actually really like Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. That would be the way to go. Of course, yeah. you're fishing and you catch a zombie fish. Right. They, well, they, of course, they, it doesn't they, last. Would they you call them walkers spoiler, or swimmers? It doesn't last. Floaters. 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 <laughs> Floaters. <laughs> we actually did some floating zombies in Michonne. I don't think we really used as much, but we had finally did the floating zombie concept. Nice. Just go to Michonne. Mm. It had so much water in it. I also feel like we haven't mentioned, uh, we've been talking mostly about dev stuff and things in the episode itself, but... Um, Shout out to obviously Dan and Kevin for starting the company yes. in the early days and sort of shepherding things this thing through yeah. from early adventure games to this kind of you know um, interactive narrative and sort of building a bunch of games after that and, and giving a jolt to the industry exactly yes. yeah uh, you yeah, know sure. I have to say when when uh, billion years ago when I booked Sam and Max I, I remember I would see auditions come come in and, and at that time. It, it read like an animated series. So as an actor, you're like, oh, shit, I need to get in on this. Yeah, like, how do I? It took, took me a couple they're tries. They're on to something. But, yeah, but when I booked, you know, Sam and Max and, and you know, learned more about what Dan and Kevin had started and just learned yeah. about Telltale Games, it was such a gift uh, as an actor to get to work yeah. on, on something like that, especially as a, you know, getting my start in the Bay Area. It's not L.A. We don't get right. a lot of animation up there. So this was just like... This was like the really cool dialogue-driven uh, work that every voice yeah. actor wants I, to be doing. Yeah, I remember being at you know, events or packs or something and, and meeting other voice actors who you guys had known and who they'd talked to and been like, hey, is there any way, like, can you, who do I send auditions yeah. to? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'd really love to get in a yeah. Telltale game because they to? knew it was about the performance and mm-hmm. then yeah. we celebrate their voices so much and build everything around those voices. Yeah. Was, I imagine being an actor is just like, oh, that sounds like a great... I want to be a part of it. Right. Like, so. So, well, it's ahead. And what, yeah, what uh, Dan and Kevin started was like, I mean, like we've said before, literally changed. It's the game changer. changer. Bones. The, the, the great cow race. 
See, you don't even know. That was Wait, the first. On. That was the first oh, game. Was that the first? I, I, yeah. I thought you were using some expression. No. I'm like, I'm just gonna say. Actually, it was. And... There was. It was the poker game that was there poker. first. But oh, then yeah. Bone was the first. Um, first interaction. And then there was a strong bad at one point. Which yeah, is... that was the only one that. So the strong bad guys produced all that dialogue and oh, Telltale made yeah. the game. It Got was it. fun though. That was a fun. Well, the the clips, the like you know. Yeah. The ads for whatever you want to say yeah, that yeah. are hilarious. That was uh, the first. That was the first game I worked on at Telltale, nice. and there was a weird. A strong bad game. A strong bad. Yeah. That's so Home funny. Star Runner. And uh, I remember, that was like the first w- weird shift for the cinematic department. Before it was kind of looked at as more of like, oh, these are the people who just need to implement the the puzzles. Yeah. And we, uh, I remember Mark Darren actually on uh, I think it was episode four, like the idea was you were making a fake movie, and he basically just said like, oh, I don't care, just go nuts, like, go, and we went. Like oh, that's the small awesome. the Smith and Mac team at the time just went nuts and were making huge fake movies out of everything. And that's I was like, fun. oh, you can do stuff in the tool. And, yeah. Uh, so that was a fun And that's memory. where all that stuff built on. You, yeah. you built future things off of those things, you know? Where's the tool now? It's on a computer somewhere, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Golden, yeah. shiny yeah. computer. Somewhere. Yeah. somewhere out Locked there. in yeah. the... You have to, no, like, nobody, put a sandbag. Nobody bag. has access to the tool. <laughs> nope. No one's publicly wow. seen it. It's yeah, I'm sure... I'm sure publicly... What I'm sure tool? there's a an owner out there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That whole the whole process is mysterious and. Yeah, I, re- I remember at stuff. some point I was I was talking to Kevin, uh, early on, and he was talking about uh, making a version for sale. Oh yeah, there, I don't think there. that ever happened. But no, that had kind of gone back and forth for years. There was, the the argument was it's the, the sort of Telltale special sauce. And it was really powerful for making games like this. Like, yeah. there's no other tool out there that you could make uh, a two-hour performance-based game in six weeks. Like yeah, the we cinematic stuff insane. is incredible, yeah. especially yeah. near yes. the end, even too. It kept getting iterated on, mm-hmm. improved and improved. Yeah, it's super. Powerful. Yeah, and it, but it being, I remember at Lucas Arts too when Mike Land and Pete and Clint Jake and they they came up with iMuse for interactive yeah. music, and it was, it's still cool. It's like a game like it, yeah, it was a game changer, and they wanted to you know, make it a product as well. Mm-hmm. And um, I forget who the, the president was at the time, but you then all of a sudden it's like, okay, so now you're doing like QA for a tool and product support and 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 it is a secret sauce. So, you you know, yep. you have to really be a tools developer or, or a creative developer. Well, and, and uh, to wrap it up back to episode one here, at the end of this, when episode one came out, there was no sort of speculation of, of how we thought it was going to do. Like, everyone was just like, well, all right, we put everything into it. Who knows? Maybe people will like it, or maybe they'll think it's boring and they want to just shoot more. Right. Um, and so it was, when we started on episode two, we still didn't really know that. And while we were making episode two is, like, episode one came out, and that's when we started seeing fan reactions of people yeah. getting really attached to the characters. And it helped us sort of lean in. Yes. Yes. Well done. Um, next time. All right. <laughs> next <laughs> time on one. The Walking Dead. Well, that, uh, but yeah, that, that must have in. been so incredibly rewarding to like. I mean, as it went each episode. I mean, on our end too, we were like, oh wow, this is really yeah, what's picking up next? speed. Yeah. So you guys must yeah. have just people been are talking psyched. about this. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like a risky thing to release. I remember like we released like the first like ten minutes of the game or like the babysitter oh, sequence yeah. or something. Yeah. And comments on any video of it were just like, what is this bullshit non game? <laughs> <laughs> like, why is this not yeah. a game? This is just a movie. Yeah. In like your it, face. like initial fan reaction to anyone who's like a, a video gamer right. was like totally right. negative. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so it really wasn't until it came out and people dug into it that they understood what it was totally. and guys started to like it. But this is a game that once if they got into the story, they'd love it. Yeah. yeah. But you didn't have to be a a very uh, exactly. proficient gamer controller, or controller to and, enjoy this game. You didn't even have to. You didn't even have to play it. No, you could watch yeah. someone play it, and it was also yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like, yes. No, make that choice. No, I've, yeah. I've met yeah. so many people who are like, "Well, I don't play games, I but just I, watch me and my husband play. or my daughter or whoever yeah. It yeah. controls it, and yeah, I basically yeah. just." And then, you know, we get in arguments, and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I don't <laughs> exactly remember do what the contemporaries are, but it felt like the early days of, like, interactive narrative being a big thing in, like, mainstream sure. video games. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I feel like there was, was a lot else quite like it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. No, before the era of the current era of the walking simulator. Yes. Which has kind of, like, moved, moved into the next level of that. Yep. That's true. I just want to keep going down the line. Oh, yeah. This, the, the whole sort of showing stats at the end, definitely... I that was really born out of playtesting and and it was the coolest thing. Yeah. It was crazy seeing it because yeah, it was, a lot of those choices weren't 
created with the intention of people arguing over which choice they made at the end. And that's sort of the thing we learned is you know you have a good choice when you get two people in the office and one of them is going, this choice sucks, we need to cut it yeah. because everyone will do this. And then the other person is saying, what? No one's going to do that. Right. And then you're like, okay, this is a good choice. Like, Yeah, yeah, so totally. We're always shooting for the 50-50. Um, for when we, in episode two, we definitely made a lot more stuff for Doug originally. And then I think... <laughs> yeah, because yeah. like, how, you, how much budget like, can we justify putting yeah, in yeah, Doug exactly. at this point? Yeah. But Carly had some great moments too. So it's like... Yeah. Carly's also really good. Yeah. So. I actually forgot about her character. I was digging into the lines, and I forgot she has lines about, like, like maybe some politician's going to buy her paper and make her have to reside in the blogosphere and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I like a bunch that. of, like, character stuff about her being, like, a journalist that I totally, totally forgot about until I started digging into the stuff for the, for the definitive edition. And she's really cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's fun. She likes, she's, like, she's a tired reporter lady. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. she's great. And I feel like we didn't talk about her much because we know Doug because he's in the office. Yeah. But she there's, has a lot, of, there's a lot of lore season. associated with Doug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Nick Vigil, who voiced. I have yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't, right. I haven't yeah, yeah. Great. done a, 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 a looked at this game in a while now. I oh, mean, really? We're, we're going, what is it, 2019? This was 2013? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. 12. That's crazy. 12. 12. 12. 12. Yeah. 12. Yeah. First episode 12. came out, at least. Yeah. yeah. Man. Man, oh, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you, I think we've done the, I feel like we played the final episode together at one point somewhere down the line in yeah. the last year or so. But yeah, going back I to this first episode. I haven't looked at this first episode in a long, long time. time. Yeah, me neither. It's Logan. crazy Whew. to see. Well, and here's yes. all the awesome people that made this possible. So Yes. Bravo. Yay. Yeah. Look at all those awesome yeah. people. <laughs> yep. Definitely, uh, it's an insane team effort. At, at Telltale, everyone is sort of involved in everything. And they there was a sort of open floor plan where... Everyone was encouraged hey, to walk around He's and one of talk to each other. Voices. Oh yeah, that's as right. As well as my hero. <laughs> oh, a lot of people did uh, zombie deaths. There was like a whole recording yeah. session where people would just go in exactly, and you would get people would go in and chug water and then do yeah. zombie death noises. Oh, I know. And, they, that yeah, was awesome. Was I remember the day uh, Jolie went into the booth to scream for that one dying lady. Mm-hmm. And everyone, you could still hear it out of the soundproof room that, that uh, Lazar was recording in. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then when, it, when she came out, everyone just kind of oh, like yeah. applauded. You know, no, what it was what it re- uh, reminded me. Um, Rhoda, who was uh, who yeah, worked the, at Telltale on the administration side, yeah. um, she, and she'd been there for a long time, um, in Narnia, which was the undeveloped backspace of the, the Telltale we were studio, where we're not supposed to be, in. but yeah. uh, it was Narnia. ended up being a meeting room because that was everything the else was booked. Yeah. And uh, they were doing recording, I think, for the prototype of Walking Dead mm. season one. Oh yeah, oh, she it was, was the lady she, in the prototype. She, she plays the lady in the prototype, sense. That makes um, sense. and she's basically in there just screaming bloody murder. And someone downstairs in yeah, the other building called the, oh. the police or police. called Telltale <laughs> to saying they were going to call the police or something. Uh, and we were hearing it in the office, and yeah. it sounded terrifying. Like, I'm it sure. Was not a good moment to be sitting there at your desk going like, uh, is everything They're okay? making yeah. games. Well, I, I tell you, if you're, if you're a voice actor uh, uh, and say. you're doing video <laughs> games and you have to audition at home, it's best to in your have closet. a house, not a uh, apartment. I live in an apartment, apartment, but I'm very close with my neighbors. I'm like, if you ever hear a screaming. <laughs> Text me first. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> especially if it sounds like military commands or... Get down. Uh, give me the gun, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to you don't want to yell that in your apartment. Oh man, lord, oh, man. that was thank thank you Kent for, yeah, for guiding is, us oh, through thank that. Thank you all for coming. Of yeah. course. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and by the way, you know we 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 talked a lot about tell 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 mm-hmm. which we all love, but uh, thank you Skybound. Yes, yes, yes. For yeah. sure. uh, because when Telltale went under, uh, Skybound stepped, stepped up in. and and <laughs> fin- I, I can't imagine how the fans would have felt if if this story didn't come. Uh, to it would have been dev- it was dev- yeah. it was oh, literally it devastating. Been horrific. It would have been horrific. Yeah. So, Skybound. Yeah. Yeah. We salute for, you for yes. sure. Cheers Indeed. to Skybound. Yeah. Well, and, and you guys everywhere. with the, the season four team, if the game had come out and not been good and satisfying, then everyone <laughs> would have just said, <laughs> exactly. "Oh man, they should have not ended it." And yeah. People aren't saying that, so that's like yeah. the exactly. highest praise. Yeah. It's, it's, it's criticism, but no one's like, "None of this should have existed." Exactly. Yeah. Which is which is the easy troll internet thing to do. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey in general. So we got to finish it. 